Hello, Richard Knudsen here again, back with another 10-minute tip edition of the Dynamic CRM Trick Bag. Now, in part one of this two-part series, I showed how easy it is to create a graphical representation of your Dynamic CRM data. In situations where you have a numeric column of data, you can summarize. Some of the obvious examples of this might be with opportunities, quotes, orders, invoices. I showed an example in particular that created a sales pipeline report with a bar chart summing up estimated revenue for each of the stages of the sales pipeline. But there are plenty of situations when it's not a sum that you want, but a count. For example, you might want to see how many contacts are assigned to each sales rep, or how many cases are in your various case categories, or the example I'll show you here, how your accounts break out across territories. Now, surprisingly, this isn't as obvious as you might think it should be how to do this, although once you understand the trick that I'll show you in this presentation, it is pretty easy and it can be applied in a lot of different situations. Now I mentioned in the previous session that I really like the new report writer in Dynamic CRM 4. It's the tool that I'll use in this presentation, but it does have its limitations, one of which I draw your attention to here. It doesn't have a count function. There's a relatively easy fix though, which involves a small customization to the entity we want the report for. What we'll do is to add a custom attribute designed specifically for counting records. We're going to give it a value of one for every record, and then we can use the exact same out-of-the-box approach I showed you in the previous session. So I'll demonstrate this to you using my CRM production system rather than the demo virtual machine so I can uh, kill two birds with one stone and get some real work done while I demonstrate these. Okay, so here we are in my CRM, and we're looking at an advanced find view on the account entity. Now, it's a perfectly nice advanced find view, but uh, I want to do a graphical representation of this, and what I want to focus in particular here is this territory field. You can see from this view that uh, most of the account records we have uh, do have a filled-in value for this out-of-the-box dynamic CRM territory lookup field, but we want to create a graph for that rather than this advanced find view. So, minimize that. Go to the workplace and let's create a new report that's going to have this for us. So, I'll click on workplace and reports. Click new. We will use the report wizard for this. So, I'll go ahead and click that. Start a new report. I'll give it a good name. How about accounts by territory and then we just need to identify the primary record type which is going to be accounts in this case that's really all we need for a report like this one so I'll just click next and um, I'll uh, adjust the filter so we see active accounts we'll just look for status value equals active and then I'll click next then we get to the layout fields step and you can start to see the problem here if I select the territory field as the group by field which I'll do here doesn't matter if I include a count for the summary type or not and you'll see why in a second so if I choose territory as the group by, then the question becomes, what do I put down here as a report column? The problem is that I need a numeric column here in order to do a graphical summary report. So you might first think that you can select something that would be unique, maybe a count number. But notice that if I select a column that's not numeric, there's no summary type here. And if I simply click OK, and go to the next step of the wizard here, you might remember, as I pointed out in the last session, that anything that doesn't have a numeric value with a sum on it in that previous step, in the layout field step, does not give us the ability to create this chart. So if what I want is a chart, I really do need something here that's a numeric field that uh, is going to give us a sum at the group level. And if you think about the account entity, there's really nothing that plays that role for us out of the box. So this is a case where I need to create a custom entity. I've taken a shortcut 
and already created that. So rather than watch me create it, let's go to Settings, Customization. And pick Customize Entities there. Go to the Account Entity. And let's go to Attributes here. And scroll down until we see this counter entity. I've got this uh, the customization prefix you may be familiar with. I use IMG by convention for my company. Here's my counter variable. You can see there the type is int, but we'll uh, open this attribute uh, details form up so we can see a little bit more about that. So here's my counter. Notice the type is integer and integer in here int. And here's my min and max. Uh, both set to 1. And again, what this will do is this is optional, but it will guarantee that any data that are populated into this field on a record in the account entity will be will have a value of 1. It doesn't guarantee that there will be anything there. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'll go ahead and save it, and if necessary, publish those changes. Now, the question becomes, how do I get values in there? Well, there are a couple of ways to populate that counter field with values, and the approach that I'm going to take is to use a workflow. I've got one that's uh, created here, counter update, not a very imaginative name, and it's a simple workflow. I'll uh, change it to give it a scope of organization. It runs when record is created, so going forward, it'll populate every new account record with a value of 1 for the counter, but I'm going to make it available on demand so I can fix up my old records. And We'll see what it does. The only thing it needs to do is to pop a 1 into this counter field. It's on additional fields, by the way, because that's how something's represented in the workflow user interface that's not on a form, and it's not really appropriate to have that on the form. Let the workflow populate that for us. And that's really all this workflow needs to do. So we'll go ahead and publish it. And remember, since it was published and made available on demand, I can now go and select all of the accounts. Let's select the first 250 accounts. And now I can run that workflow on demand to put those values into all of those columns. We'll let the workflow whir for a minute. Okay, and at long last, back here in the report writer, let's get this set up. Here we are in our layout fields step of the wizard here. I select territory there. And let's see how adding that custom attribute fixes our problem. So here, what I want to do is to go down and select counter as the columns, the only column we need. And remember now, the whole reason for doing this is because since this is an integer, I can now get a sum out of this. So I can choose sum as the summary type. That's all I need. Could display other information if I wanted to, but let's just keep this one simple. And now I can select chart and table because I've got a numeric piece of information to summarize. Let's go ahead and do uh, how about a horizontal bar chart. This wouldn't be a bad place for a pie chart, but we'll let the height of the bars represent the uh, number of accounts in that territory. I'll go ahead and accept all the defaults. Click Next. Finish out of here. And once we're done, we can run the report. And you can see our problem is solved. So again, I just want to stress that this is a general technique and is useful for a graphical, graphical representation of your data across different categories. Um, in any situation where you don't have the convenience of having sort of a built-in numeric entity or attribute that you can sum in the report writer. So that's what this is useful for. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you, it always surprises me, uh, once you know a trick like this, how often you uh, find good uses for it. So I hope you found this helpful. Richard Knutson signing off. And if you did find this helpful, I encourage you to visit my blog, the Dynamic CRM Trick Bag at the uh, URL of the same name, and you'll find uh, lots of similar content up there. Thanks again.